Outrocast. Are you dialing in from Nashville? I am, yeah, from my home. And it's a uh, beautiful day here. So it's this nice breeze and it's, it's fall. I love it. It's my favorite time of the year. I remember hearing a decade or so ago that you were in Nashville. When did you actually move there? Oh, gosh, I've been back and forth to Nashville. I think the first time I moved here was in the early 90s and stayed about six, seven years and then moved back to L.A. This time I've been here, oh, I want to say 17 years, something like that. It's been a while. It's been a while. I have spent more time here in Nashville now than, I, than being an L.A. girl. So that's a little weird for me. They, uh, the reason I ask is because most of the LA people seem to have moved to Vegas or Nashville, but you were ahead of the pack on all that. I was, yes. Uh, well, I started, you know, coming to Nashville when I was like nine and 10. So I started in country music, actually. A lot of people don't know that. And uh, that's really what was played in my home for my family. And that was my early musical influence. And I uh, started singing around LA uh, and some in Vegas, any clubs that would have me. I didn't, you know, I'd go in the club and do my stand by your man and my Patsy Klein's and three or four songs and then out the door I went because I was too young to be in the club. But um, that was kind of the earlier way that, you know, my dad didn't really know how to get me started. Uh, so, you know, listen to bands and where they got it and demo tapes, all the organic, you know, kind of stuff. And um, and then it ended up where he met Hoyt Axton and he was a huge fan. My dad was and uh, obviously went to a lot of their shows and met Hoyt and, and mentioned to him, mm -hmm. you know, I have a daughter that wants to sing. And I said, oh, that's great. Uh, and then it went on and on and on for them. And then my dad brought back a demo tape like a couple months later. He was back in town and doing a show. He goes, well, this is my daughter's songs, you know, listen to her, please. And uh, Hoyt actually really listened to it. And then he told my dad, here's the deal. My mom's a manager, May Axton in Nashville. I suggest she could give her a call and maybe she can help. So that was my first manager. She brought me to Nashville and I started, you know, I started on the Nashville scene then. <laughs> Ahead of the pack, but bringing it forward just a few decades now, your new record Shadows, when did you actually finish it? Because it's not still out for another couple of weeks. It is November 25th is the street date. You get to hear it. Yay, finally. Uh, I was finished right before COVID. It wasn't mastered, oh. but all the writing was done. We were ready to go. We had a tour. Like all of it was, you know, like all of us, we had all our stuff going. Right. And then COVID happened. And uh, of course, obviously you can't tour, so it's not a good time to release the album. So pulling it back and it was released. It was supposed to be released again last year but I pulled it back. Although I had been out on the road doing shadows, if you will, the tour or showing the mm -hmm. music to the fans um, because those dates were booked and aligned with that release date. So I either had to cancel those shows and I just really kind of felt that, you know, so many people were struggling when it was safe to go about, you know, doing shows with yeah. social distancing. Those venues really needed you know, somebody that was going to come. I mean, they didn't really need another entertainer to pull out. And I work a lot of other small businesses. I have a cooking club. I have yes. an online boutique. And, you know, I know what it's like to be small business as being an independent artist. So we all band together and I wanted to honor those commitments and plug through. What the good thing about that is I got to test the music out on the fans. I got to, you know, show them what's up and coming. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my existing fans over the years were like, whoa, you know, <laughs> but they love the music. But it was it was a little bit of a head turn. You know, I've been building up since the color of silence saying, you know, I've got more in me, people, than you might know. Um, I'm more in depth. There's a lot more to tell. There's more to Tiffany than what you think. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've been showing that. But I think Shadows really kind of bust down those doors a little bit. And it was awesome to see existing fans from you know, my gay fan base to my overly pop fan base to the new kids on the block fan base to, you know, my true to tiffs to people that are more of the rock mindset wanting to just check it out. It was great to see all of them kind of go, yeah, I like the music. Okay. Like I get it. Um, and I think that's something that you, you know, you can do all the videos you want. You can do, mm -hmm. you know, it's great to talk about it. It's, you know, thank you for your time. It's, it's awesome. But there's something about seeing it live. That's where, you know, you get the true 
yes and amen. Um, and I am a live performer. That's what I do best, I feel. Yep. Um, and, you know, having the right band behind me, I've got a couple of guys from LA Guns in my band. Um, and we just which, go out which and guys from LA Guns are in your band. That, that's a great band. Johnny Martin and Scott Coogan are with me. Scott and uh, from we the started. Brides of, Brides of Destruction. Uh, he's, yes. Does, doesn't he also sing backup and he was on an all for one album? Oh, I believe so. Yes, I do believe so. He's got a great voice, actually. Scott is multi-talented uh, yeah. and he's a great, great guy. So I enjoy being out on the road with those guys. We start again in February, spot dates. Um, not really going to do a full tour tour on this one. We've kind of upped the production. So a lot of the smaller clubs that we go to aren't going to really fit for this. But I really just want to make it, you know, strategic and kind of up the stakes, if you will, more production, more fancy, I call it zhuzhing, more zhuzh it up, um, and really get the message out there, you know, with booking those shows in strategic places, a lot of places I haven't done that are on my wish list. So I'm throwing that up to my agent um, now. But, you know, we'll be touring uh, America, we'll be touring the UK, mm -hmm. Australia is in the works now. And I really hope to go back to, you know, some of the Asian you know, some of the Asian countries, you know, like uh, Japan would be great. I'd love to get over there. Um, uh, Singapore is always great for me. Um, Malaysia, I'd love to go back there. These are all my wishes, Thailand. <laughs> but cool. I, I mean, not just music, but also the food influence. Like I said, I have a cooking club, Let's Food with Tiffany. I'd love to go work with some of the chefs there. And it, to me, I mean, nowadays, you know, after COVID, we just got to live our lives and food and music packages together are awesome. There are a lot of great night, fun, you know, good one stop for your money. So mm -hmm. I'm working that and then we're working some rock stuff and I think it all comes together. It's going to take a second to connect the dots, but the, you know, if you just live your life and you love what you're doing and you're true, I think you will find your tribe. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. You mentioned a bunch of different job titles, but you didn't mention your acting career, which you've had success in. <laughs> so, yes, very in words, serious stuff. You, you have a lot of different meanings to a lot of different people. That's something I admire about you in that when somebody goes, we want to see, quote, the 80s pop star, you'll do that stuff, but you've evolved and you've grown so that there is the food stuff, there is the acting, there's the entrepreneurial stuff. I'd heard about a shop that or two that you've had in the Nashville area. So mm -hmm. you've managed to not just reinvent yourself, but have a multifaceted career and a sense of humor about the whole thing. When yes. did you start to feel at peace about all that and stop chasing major label stuff? Oh, uh, a while ago, actually. That's probably been 10 years now, at least. Um, you know, it, it's, if it works for you, it's great. But um, a lot of my experiences was, you know, hurry up and wait <laughs> and then hurry up and do committees and hurry up. And it, we did a lot of talking about music rather than releasing music and seeing results. And for me, that's just mentally not cool. I like freak out. Um, I'm a doer and, you know, I don't want to do things in the wrong direction, but I also want to do things, you know, so that was very hard for me, especially like having albums where we were all on the go. You have all these meetings, you've got these plans, and then all of a sudden they get fired or they leave the company. And now you're with a new A&R person who's like, eh, not really feeling it. It's like, well, yeah. it's done and I paid for it and this is it. Feel it, hug it. I don't care. Make it happen. You know, and you just, you can't do that. You know, people either have to be into it or they're not. Um, and that's what I'm finding, you know, with everything I'm doing, there has to be a passion there. So my new label Deco, they're really cool. They're small, but they love music. That's a mm -hmm. good start, right? They like, you know, they get entertainers. That's a good start. Um, and they're here, they're there to help facilitate, you know, success in my dreams. Um, you know, and so it's not really just about the money. It's not just about you know, the protocol, the, the, it's really a heart thing. And I wanted to find, again, there's finding your tribe. You know, I wanted to find people who are on that level, mm -hmm. you know, um, who support me, however big or small. Um, and however, again, like I was just having a meeting with the label and for some reason they didn't know about my cooking club. And they're like, holy shit, like, this is great. 
you know, they didn't look at it as taking attention away from the album. What do you mean? They were like, what does that entail? I'm like, well, I do tip takeovers and I go in and I chef and I work with chefs and I do a little acoustic thing, you know, and we can also do some of the acoustic stuff from shadows and break it down there. You know, I've worked really hard behind the scenes to make it valid. At first it was kind of a shit show because I didn't know what I was doing and it was in COVID and, you know, you just didn't know what to do, but I had to do something. And I was, you know, very grateful for the light, light, lifelines I was given. Um, but now it's much more solidified, much more professional and, and chefs are calling me and I'm getting to have people really taste my food. And the evenings are really being booked as a real deal. Um, that, you know, is again, something that the fan experience food and music goes hand in hand. Um, you know, what we try to do is keep that edge. We kind of keep it in the realm of shadows. Uh, you know, so I'm not wearing a bunch of different personality hats, if you will, you know, I'm not momming it out on the cooking thing and then rocking it out on this and it's all one an extension of tiffany and you know that's hard enough to find even in the cooking world find people in that world you know some things don't work for me but these evenings that we're putting together are going to really help support the album i think they're going to be a great thing as well woven in between the shadows touring that you can have a different experience with me and you know see the music shadows broken down acoustically and have a great night when you're interviewing an artist about their new album, you go, how would you describe your sound? As a chef, how would you describe your cuisine? Do you have a specific description of what you do? My food is inspired by my travels, really. From mom and, mom, mom and pop places to you know high-end restaurants, mostly international foods that uh, I love traveling. You know, I don't like flying, but I like traveling. Mm. I love the experience of meeting new people, different cultures, and what makes them tick. And I think the heart, you know, is a lot of it in the kitchen. It's where your family is. It's where, you know, the, all of that. You, when you go out, you have that great experience of dining with people, especially now after COVID, that one-on-one -on -one connection. So mm -hmm. my food is really a take and infusion on that. Um, and it's mostly earthy. I love a lot of savory and earthy. Uh, combinations. I like spicy. Not everything is spicy, but there's always an option to add uh, because I, I, I definitely keep in my red hair. I'm a hothead. Um, you know, I, I love spicy. I've always loved spicy. So a lot of chili influence. I grew up in LA. Right. There's obviously Mexican food. You, you were That's from my South base. Central LA, right? Oh, yes. I'm from East LA, actually. Norwalk, California, representing. Yeah. <laughs> and And I mean, you know, that's all Latin food, that was all Mexican food. So I got great firsthand with being in the kitchens of people's grandmas and moms and helping because that's what you did back then. You helped in the kitchen. Um, but I learned so much and I didn't even know that's what was being, I was going to use that later. My own family base, half of my family, you know, is from the South. So there's these great Southern dishes. I mean, amazing stuff. I didn't know that was called soul food until I met the new kids on the block. And they told me to, uh, took me to the soul food restaurant. I'm like, my grandma has more soul than y'all. I don't know what you're talking about. Like she's making cornbread and black eyed peas and all this. This is what I eat at home. Right. So that's funny, food you know, food. food, I'm, I'm partly Arabic, Lebanese. Um, so, you know, strong cooks in my family, all about gathering, feeding people. And that's what I love to do as well. Well, down to the last three quick questions here before I let you go. Uh, talking about your new album, Shadows, it has a Rival Sons cover on it. Do you remember when you first discovered Rival Sons? I do. It was, uh, gosh, about four years ago, I want to say something like that. In the van, my producer was playing it, and I was like, what is this? And I loved it. So I've been a fan ever since. Um, and it was actually his idea to put a cover tune on the album. Mm -hmm. And then it just kept, it kept getting better. It was like, well, what if he knows LA guns? Uh, he knew Johnny for many years. And he was like, what if we got LA guns to play on this? Um, and we never thought that Tracy would say yes, you know, really. Um, we didn't even approach Tracy at the, at the time. We just used our friends, went into the Sunset Sound in LA and recorded the track. And after it was, you know, we did a good job, I guess, you know, people were pretty happy with the performance. Um, I think it was either Johnny or uh, was it, I think it, it was Johnny who approached Tracy to say, hey, give a listen to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he really liked it. So he joined in as well and played on the track. So that was even better. Just got you know better and better. So I'm very proud 
And I think that track is slamming. I think we've mm -hmm. done a great, um, you know, retake on it, if you will, a tiff take on it. Uh, and I love singing that song live. It's got so much energy. And, and again, people just don't expect. They're like, I always say now when I go out and do a show, you know, I'm always like, we're going to rock out this next song. And I tell, talk a little bit about the history of it. If they don't know who Rival Sons are, you know, go check them out for sure. And, mm -hmm. uh, and after the song is over, everybody's like, and I'm all, that's it. I'm going to be over here doing meet and greets and I will give you a big old hug. You will recover very quickly. Yes, this is Tiffany rocking your face off. Anyway, out over here. Let's just <laughs> make this out because I mean, again, I remember the first couple of times we played the song and people were like, holy shit, what just happened here? Like, that was amazing yeah. and not what I expected. And I don't know how I feel about that, but it would, they were all smiles, really. It's just really wrapping your head around, I guess, maybe that the entertainer that you thought that sings, I think we're alone now, <laughs> dancing around in malls, really has matured into something that, you know, hopefully people feel is quite special. Next question, speaking of covers and quote unquote, the old days, Weird Al parodied, I think we're alone now, which obviously was a cover. But what did you think of that at the time when Weird Al did that? I thought it was great. I'm a, I'm a fan. So I think that, you know, when that happens, you feel like you really made it, you know? So I, I loved it. I, I really love it. And, and it's funny because we, we kind of pull it up every once in a while um, in the van or something. When we're traveling, we're always listening to music and we have a little chuckle of it. There you go. Well, the last question I have, you're in rare company in a lot of ways. And one of them is that you're one of the few people that you say just the first name and everyone knows who you're talking about. So do you have another name that people, once they're friends with you, that they elevate, that they call you by? Like, for example, if you want to pretend like, you know, Robert De Niro, you go, yeah, I know Bob. I know Bobby. Do you <laughs> graduate from Tiffany to Tiff or anything like that? No, a lot of people just shorten it to T now. You know, that's kind of like what the band calls me or like a lot of longtime friends. It's just, I'm just T. Uh, to the twins, my niece and nephew, I'm Aunt T. So that's a very special title. But yeah, T, Tiff. Um, but I think we've just shortened it to, to T at this point. <laughs> well, T, thank you for your time. Hope to see you live in New York in the near future. But congratulations on the new record, the new record deal, and looking forward to whatever's to come from you, whether it is on the screen, on the record, on the Instagram, cooking, whatever it is, looking forward. Thank you. I appreciate it. Outro cast.